Hello, welcome to the Ministry of Bridges channel. Before introducing today's episode, allow me to share a couple of ideas with you. Do you know that feeling, premonition, when you know that something is going to happen in a certain way? I'm not referring to guess the score of the Manchester Derby, more to do when you listen to the very first song of a band and then you know that band is going to be big, or when a company, or even an individual, is doing so well that you know the success is certain. Or when the very first version of Microsoft Windows was launched, still running under MS-DOS, and you, did you have the feeling that operating system would change the personal computer's world forever? And what about the very first iPhone? Well, I keep going on with this for a long time. But my point is, I'm certain the bridge I'm about to introduce is going to change the bridge design and construction forever. This bridge will be recorded in the history books as a game changer in our way of work. Maybe in the future or in a very different social network platform, maybe controlled by artificial intelligence, this bridge will be subject to a special episode to mark its anniversary or even as a clip of an episode about the evolution of design and build for bridges. I am saying episode, but no one really knows what is going to be called in 100 years, unless you have one of those premonitions I'm talking about. Today's bridge is not the very first one to be designed and built using this high-end technology and a complete new way of work. No, it is not. But like the Industrial Revolution, where the steam engine was considered, and it's official, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. But many other factors happened before that contributed to that revolution too. Here, it is the same. There were other bridges designed and built this way already. But this one, and let me say again, this one is the one that everyone will remember forever. This is my feeling. Well, for me, it is more than a feeling. It is a certainty. Today's episode is all about Ranselva Bridge in Norway. And what is so special about this bridge? Well, has been designed, approved, and being built without one single 2D drawing. Stay around to know more and why this way of work, for me, is the future. My name is Gabriel Nevis, and this is your Ministry of Bridges. Welcome to the Ranselva Bridge Drawing Less Project special episode. Enjoy! The Ranselva Bridge crosses a river of the same name near the town of Honefoss, 60 kilometers northwest of Oslo, Norway. It is part of the E16, an east-west highway that starts in the Swedish city of Gavl, runs through Norway and continues into Scotland and Northern Ireland via ferry. For a pan-European project, a pan-European team, right? The contractor? It's a Norwegian construction company PNC. The design is from Armando Rito Engenharia, a Portuguese civil engineering firm. The detailing? Well, modeling was executed by beam experts in Denmark, Finland, Norway and Poland, working for Swedish engineering consultancy Sveco. These magicians from Sveco modeled the bridge in Tecla structures, a Trimble beam software, used parametric algorithm design Grasshopper, a plugin for Rhino, and to maximize the use of parametric design, they used the Tecla model sharing collaboration tool so they could work at the same time in the same models. Having Sveco as part of the team was of crucial importance, as their first drawing less project, 
near the Olympic city of Lillehammer gave them the much needed experience. Or at least, a massive list of lessons learned, I guess. This is a two single lane with a gentle curve over the river and forest. This 634 meter long bridge design type is a concrete box girder and balanced cantilever with a total of six piers ranging in height from 5 to 42 meters. The highest part of the deck are 55 meters high above the ground. But this is nothing new. What is then the big thing about Ransalver Bridge? The Ransalver Bridge was designed and being built without one single 2D drawing. It is the biggest bridge to date to use this futuristic way of work. In fact, this project is such a game changer that was recognized by the jury of Tecla Beam Awards 2020 as the best beam project in the world. This is not a small achievement. This project was running against amazing buildings, one hospital and some very complex industrial plants. For a bridge to win a global competition of this kind is something of spectacular for us, the bridge lovers. Now, time to focus on the bridge project. Why a Portuguese company? Well, Armando Rito Engenharia has designed around 70 bridges like this one. For them, this is business as usual. At least, until they got involved on a drawing-free project, right? For Sveco, the modeling team using IFC, an open standard format, was a no-brainer. The attributes followed the Norwegian authority's set of rules and some extra were added to fulfill the contractor PNC needs. A couple of interesting facts. 95% of all information is transferred to PNC via IFC files. Each object in Ransalva Beam model has 50 information attributes. No doubt, the best way to tackle the immense quantity of data is using 3D Beam models. If you want to know what an IFC is, watch the Ministry of Bridges episode number 3. I still remember when I started my career back in late 80s and doing drawings by hand, as it was being done for 4,000 years. Then the CAD revolution looked like it was going to stay for centuries to come. The same happened with the 3D modeling or simple form of BIM, as I called it. The dreamers, they didn't stop pushing and in 2017, the parametric design changed everything again. These changes or improvements on our way of work are indeed changes for better. This is in fact an important part in modeling for construction. 70% of all objects were designed and parametrically controlled using Grasshopper. Remember that Grasshopper is not a BIM software. If the BIM model is not getting to site, I'm sorry, that is not Bridges Information Modeling. One model to build or is doing something else. The link to Tecla structures make all that possible by transferring the data to the software. It is a closed and perfect loop. When numbers such as 200,000 rebars, 250 post tensioning cables that couldn't clash with anything else, and 200 separate poor phases come across, it helps to put things into perspective. It was never going to be an easy task. Here, the BIM model. This is being used for federated, also known as multidisciplinary control model, third-party control, construction, and it will be the base for operations and maintenance model. To support the PNC with construction, the model is used in four main purposes. Earthworks, digging and backfilling, pouring concrete and scaffolding, third-party products that are cast into the model, and reinforcement. The Ministry of Bridges understood that value engineering was used. Designers and contractors are collaborating since early stages of the project and finding the best way forward. That's the way. Oh, and I would love to know how they are solving these potential hard clashes on site. It is not that a 2D drawing could be of more help, not at all. I'm just curious to know how these kind of spots are being highlighted to the construction worker. A digital visitor center was built 
using virtual reality glass. If bird is the word, here, why is the question? There are official reports from Statens Vengsen, the Norwegian Road Authority, that shows that the drawing-based process has a 19% increase in cost due to the design changes, errors, or unforeseen issues, while the beam model process has 8%. Not bad. What about the drawing-less process? Even knowing PNC will take more time to adjust to this way of work, it is almost certain that they will manage to build this baby faster. Now imagine if drawing less process, extra cost, can be reduced just 2%, from 8 to 6%. That's a lot of money. In fact, temporary numbers are showing that the 8% will be reduced. The Ministry of Bridges would love to have those savings translated to euros, please. Each side team is equipped with tablets so they can access relevant parts of the BIM model. They also have containers with larger computer screens, BIM stations, where workers can prepare and plan their tasks. PNC is aligning young and computer skilled workers with their older and much more experienced workers. That is a collaboration that is crucial for the successful construction of this project. The Renselva design team has been taking their work another step further into the future with the use of the augmented reality system Trimbleight Vision. Trimbleight Vision, a high accuracy augmented reality system, is being used on site. This tool is made of a satellite antenna connected to an Android phone. Using a dedicated app, the virtual version is then superimposed with the reality captured by the smartphone camera. Sight vision can be of great help when installing pipes, placing scaffolding, or even rebar cages. This is a technology that is still in its early stages. In fact, prototypes were used in Renselva prior to the official launch of Sight Vision. The only way for a successful development of hardware and software is to have a close collaboration with the final users. And that is what Trimble Site Vision development team is doing. The Ministry of Bridges thinks that it is not a surprise that the Renselva team is keen to experiment this new technology. After all, they are building a massive bridge without one single drawing. The Renselva project is closing the gap between the traditional and the future way of work. This project paves the way towards a more efficient and cost-effective design, build and operations. Much more could have been said about this remarkable project. Maybe on another occasion. For now, I just want to congratulate all that were, are and will be involved on the Renselva Bridge project. All the best, and well done, dreamers. We will finish with a tribute to the Renselva team. Do you agree with the statement that this way of work will be the future? Or at least this is the beginning of the end of the old-fashioned 2D-based way of work. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. It will be of great help if you could support your Bridges channel by clicking the subscribe button and at the same time ring the notification bell. And if you like this episode, smash the like button too. 
This will help this channel to be found by others that appreciate bridges. This will help this channel to be found by others that appreciate bridges as we do. It's time to say goodbye for today. See you in the next episode and have a See you in the next episode and have a drawing less day.